All right, good afternoon. Welcome to the Kennedy Space Center. You know, it's been almost nine years since July 4th of 2011. That's the last time a, a crew flew into the shuttle landing facility on their way to space. And I can't tell you how great it is to welcome Bob and Doug here for this historic mission. You know, I, I look at what we've accomplished. You know, this is a, a whole new way of sending people to space, the commercial crew program. This really is monumental. And I consider all the things that we're doing, you know, and it, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I, uh, I couldn't be more proud of the role that KSC has had to play in uh, enabling U.S. astronauts flying on U.S. rockets from here at the Cape once again. Absolutely outstanding. So great to have you guys here. And, and you're going to hear from Bob and Doug in just a minute. But uh, before they get a chance to talk and get introduced, it's my privilege and honor to introduce our NASA Administrator, Jim Bridenstine. Jim has been a huge advocate for the commercial crew program and his leadership, you know, he's been a strong supporter of the government commercial partnerships, a new way of doing business at NASA and especially here at the Kennedy Space Center. And, uh, you know, like uh, Doug and I, uh, Jim is also a naval aviator, and I kind of wonder if maybe he wouldn't like to trade places with uh, with Doug. I know I'm, I sure yeah, I sure would. So Jim, over to you, sir. All right, thank you, sir. Bob, uh, yeah, thank you, Bob. It's uh, great to be here at the Kennedy Space Center, where uh, history is made over and over again. And Bob, your leadership has really transformed uh, this facility. Um, as you mentioned, July fourth. Uh, 2011 uh, was the last time we had crew arrive to, to take off on a shuttle flight. But I would also like to, to say that was, a, that was a tough time for the agency. It was a tough time for the Kennedy Space Center. And because of your hard work and determination and uh, so many others here at the Kennedy Space Center, we are on the cusp of launching American astronauts on American rockets from American soil yet again. Um, and as you said, Bob, this time we're doing it differently than we've ever done it before. NASA is not going to purchase, own, and operate the hardware the way we used to purchase, own, and operate the hardware. We are partnering with commercial industry with the intent that they would go get customers that are not NASA and drive down our costs and increase the access to space um, and ultimately have multiple providers that are competing against each other on cost and innovation. And, of course, that's what this commercial crew program um, that NASA has been pushing forward on for so long. That's what this program is, in fact, all about. Um, I wanna, I'm going to turn it over to the astronauts here in just one second, but just to, to put a, a historical significance on this moment in time. Uh, this will be the fifth time in American history when we have launched American astronauts on a brand new vehicle. We did it in Mercury, Gemini, Apollo. We did it with the space shuttles. And now we're going to do it on a SpaceX uh, Falcon rocket with a Crew Dragon space capsule. Um, and it's these gentlemen that are going to have the opportunity to, to pioneer once more for the United States of America in what is this new era in human spaceflight. Um, so this is a very historically significant moment. Um, and I also want to say that I know times are tough right now. You know, Bob Cabana and I have been walking around in our masks um, everybody wants to shake hands, and yet we have to resist. We just welcomed our astronauts, and we couldn't shake. We're waving from six feet away, and we're looking at all the media that are here, and everybody's wearing their masks. 
This is a tough time in American history. It's a tough time in world history. But it is not unique to the times that we saw in, 19, in the 1960s. We had a war raging in, in Vietnam. We had protests. We had civil rights abuses and civil rights protests. We had division in this country the likes of which were never seen before. And at the same time, NASA was able to unite not just the United States of America, but we were able to unite the world in this very unique moment when we saw Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin land on the moon. Now here we are in this point where NASA has not had access to the International Space Station with its own rockets now for nine years. Um, and this is a moment when we can all look and be inspired uh, as to what the future holds. We have a moment in time when we don't just have to reflect on how difficult things are right now, but we can talk about how bright things are going to be in the future. And, um, and with that, I just want to say thank you to Bob and Doug for the great work you're about to do, the amazing work you've already done, veterans of multiple space shuttles each, space shuttle flights each, um, and just uh, uh, and, uh, you're the best that America has to offer. And we're thrilled uh, that you're willing to take on this mission to once again return American astronauts on American rockets from American soil to the International Space Station. So with that, I'll turn it over. Bob Benkin, I'll turn it over to you first to say a few words, um, and then you can turn it over to Doug, and then it's over to you guys. You guys are going to be ask, answering questions. So uh, with that, Bob, I'll turn it over to you. Well, thank you, sir. We really appreciate the uh, introduction and would like to thank uh, Colonel Cabana for his leadership both here at the Kennedy Space Center and back at the Johnson Space Center when we uh, all uh, entered our service as astronauts. He was the uh, chief of the office and uh, welcomed us aboard. And so we've been under his uh, tutelage or leadership or for quite some time, and we really appreciate that. Uh, both Doug and I are really excited to be here. This is a, an awesome time to be an astronaut with a, a new spacecraft to get a chance to go and fly. As graduates of uh, military test pilot schools, if you uh, give, gave us one thing that we could have put on our list of uh, dream jobs that we would have gotten to have someday, it would have been to be aboard a new spacecraft, be conducting a test mission aboard that spacecraft, and uh, Doug and I get that chance to do it. So we're, we're thankful for that opportunity. And we view it as, a, as an opportunity, but also a responsibility for the American people, for the SpaceX team, for all of NASA that's uh, put this opportunity together and, and entrusted us with it. And so just excited to be back in the great state of Florida at the Kennedy Space Center, headed toward 39 Alpha, and a chance to launch again uh, from American soil on an American rocket. Thank you. That's good. Yeah, over to you, Doug. <laughs> it's just uh, it's an incredible honor to be back here at Kennedy Space Center. Bob and I started out, uh, our first astronaut jobs were here at Kennedy. So we spent uh, the first three or four years after we were ASCANs launching or helping to launch, obviously, shuttles uh, into space. And, and, and this is a very, very special place to us. Uh, it's almost like a home away from home. So it's great to be back. Uh, it's an incredible place. Uh, Incredible time for NASA, the space program, uh, once again, launching U.S. crews from Florida and hopefully just a, a week from about right now, which is incredible. I happen to have been one of the four astronauts that landed here almost nine years ago in T-38s uh, on the 4th of July of 2011 to uh, close out the space shuttle program. So it's incredibly humbling to be here to start out the next uh, launch from the United States. Also want to thank the uh, incredible men and women of uh, SpaceX from Hawthorne to McGregor and uh, here at Kennedy that have put so many thousands of hours uh, of work into, our, into this rocket and to this spacecraft. And uh, we're looking forward to getting uh, up close and personal with uh, Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon here in just a few days. Thanks again for uh, everybody at home supporting us and supporting NASA. This is a great time uh, in America to be able to do this again. And uh, Bob and I are honored to be the uh, lucky ones to fly this vehicle. Thank you. Uh, hello, this is Marcia Dunn of the Associated Press. It's been a long road, an emotional roller coaster. Um, do you have a sense of triumph, uh, at least a little bit? And tell me what's going through your minds and hearts as you're finally here to really launch. Uh, I, you know, I don't, triumph is probably not the word I would use. I mean, we've been working, uh, Bob and I have been working on this program for five years, uh, day in and day out. And there are folks here at NASA and at SpaceX, it's 
longer than that. It, it's just it's been a it's been a marathon in many ways, and that's what you'd expect to uh, develop a, a human rated space vehicle that can go to and from the International Space Station. So I think. Uh, you know, it's a long time coming in some ways, and I think uh, if you asked us, uh, you know, how quickly the last few months have gone in some ways, getting to this point, it's gone pretty fast. Uh, other times it's been very slow uh, and just a lot of work, a lot of travel for a lot of people to get to get us to this point. So I think it's uh, it's kind of a culmination, and it's, a, it's that next stage of uh, human spaceflight. Hey, Bob. Doug, good to see you guys. Hey, good to see you. Thanks. Uh, Doug, uh, I'll give this one to you. When you, when you landed on STS-135 nine years ago, right over there, you had no way of knowing <clears throat> how or when Americans would launch again from American soil. There was no NASA SpaceX partnership. There was nothing called CCP. Does it seem improbable, now that you're back, how this whole thing has come full circle, both for, for, for you in particular? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, when you when you fly a, a shuttle flight, by the time you land, you're just exhausted. You're you're glad that you had a successful mission, and you just want to see your family. Uh, and I think, you know, after that, you think about okay, what's next? Because we obviously knew that that was the last uh, shuttle flight, but we also knew we were flying people on Soyuz. We were going to continue to fly on space station and those kinds of things. So, yeah, from that standpoint, no, absolutely no expectation that frankly that I would be even flown again um, but you know it, it just it's an evolving thing and you know the folks at NASA had a great idea to to form a public private partnership with companies and compete for basically space travel and and it has ended up in this situation and you know we're lucky enough to be on the vehicle obviously but it's 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 just been it has been a long road in a, in a lot of ways but uh, I, I certainly consider myself very lucky to be part of it feels good to be in the launching business again absolutely <laughs> absolutely <laughs> hey guys good to see you Greg Falone Spectrum News 13 hey, enjoyed uh, flying with you in the SCA Doug back in 2011 that was a lot of fun yeah that um, was a while ago <laughs> that was a while back I know almost a decade um, just wanted to know, you know, back in 1981, these two guys named Young and Crippen uh, climbed on top of a shuttle, the shuttle Columbia. It had never been flown. It was a test. Have you guys taken some inspiration from those two guys uh, doing what they did? You know, a pair of guys getting on this huge spacecraft, and now you're going to be going on a test flight as well on a brand new spacecraft. Any inspiration from those? Uh, we certainly take inspiration from all those who've come before us particularly the folks that have done a, a first, particularly a, a first flight of a new vehicle. Um, I think whenever we've had a chance to, to speak with some of those folks, and I know the STS-135 crew kind of had a special relationship with, uh, with, uh, with that crew being the kind of the first and the last of the, in the shuttle business. Uh, whenever we've had a chance to speak with the, the astronauts uh, who had those opportunities before us or those responsibilities before us, the thing they've emphasized is uh, in the moment, being as prepared and ready for whatever may come your way as, as possible. And I think uh, the inspiration to do that has come from their successes. And, and both Doug and I take that uh, very seriously whenever we've executed a, you know, a training simulation or a verification event of the spacecraft hardware, we've really tried to focus on and, and think about, hey, uh, what would uh, Bob, not this Bob or that Bob, but uh, Bob Crippen have done in this situation? Or what would uh, Captain Young have said at our Monday morning meeting, he was there when we uh, entered our service in the astronaut corps, always had uh, uh, good ideas and uh, uh, just willing to share them with everybody, anyone who would listen. And, and we took that to heart and, you know, made sure that whenever we were presented those opportunities, we asked those questions. We tried to be as prepared as possible. Nobody wants to see this uh, mission to be a success more than us, uh, as you might imagine. And we don't want to uh, be the folks that uh, don't make it successful. So uh, we, we definitely take inspiration from those that have come before us. Good afternoon, Melanie Holt, WFTV. Chris Cassidy is up at the station right now and a little shorthanded. Has any determination been made on how long you all will stay at the station? For a while, I think is the uh, right answer. One to four months is what what I think they're looking at. And of course, there's a lot of things that go into that decision. And, you know, part of it is the, the flight test of this particular vehicle. Part of it is the, 
whoever's coming next, crew one, those folks, and when that vehicle will be prepared and ready to go, and then the things that need to be done on board space station. So there, it's just a lot of juggling going on right now and, and trades being made and and we're prepared for any and all of those eventualities. And, you know, honestly, in fact, we just got an email from Chris last night and uh, I, I think I can quote him. He, he said something about he's looking forward to seeing our ugly mugs on board space station. And I don't particularly agree with him on that part, but uh, he you know, he is working very hard up there, as you might imagine, uh, as the single USOS crew member. And, uh, you know, we're hoping to just go up there and, and lend a couple extra sets of hands and hopefully not make more work for him in the, in the meantime. But, but it's exciting because, you know, we, we know Chris very well. I flew with Chris. My wife flew with Chris. Uh, so it's just it's a special time for, for all of us to just get to be, you know, up there on Space Station together and, and, and maybe take in a little bit of everything ISS has to offer rather than the two week shuttle mission, which is just, you never stop and you don't get a chance to really take it all in quite as much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, Dan Billow from uh, WESH. I'll address this to you, Doug, uh, just uh, randomly, I guess, but uh, I'd like to know what you think of the Crew Dragon as a flying machine. Uh, I think it's an outstanding flying machine. Um, you know, the, the folks at SpaceX, as well as Kathy Leaders and her team uh, with Commercial Crew have just spent a ton of time uh, working on this vehicle and honing it to the vehicle it is right now. Uh, it's been through all kinds of different testing, culminated uh, a few months ago with the in-flight abort, which is probably one of the most incredible things I've ever seen in person. Um, just an amazing vehicle. Uh, it is definitely not the space shuttle. Uh, in many ways. It's much smaller, but it's a capsule. It's state-of-the-art from uh, a technology standpoint, and we are uh, so excited to be in a real spaceship and not the simulator here in just a week. Hi, Stephen Clark from Spaceflight Now over here. Good to see you all. Um, what do you guys have planned over the next week between now and the launch? Um, I think you're going to be able to actually strap into the spacecraft this weekend, uh, get a look around and get a feel for it. Uh, but also, how excited are you for that? And are you going to have any time for uh, to spend time with your families, maybe at the beach house? Uh, any other things that you're excited about over the next week, uh, getting ready to launch on May 27th? We do have a, a lot of exciting activities over the, the next seven days. We'll get a chance to put our, our spacesuits on again to make sure that they're finally completely up and ready for the actual event. As you mentioned, we'll get a chance to climb into the Dragon capsule, strap in and walk through the pre-launch uh, timeline uh, inside the vehicle. That'll involve riding in the Teslas out to the launch pad, going through that whole exercise just to polish the team one more time prior to uh, the launch. And then of course, uh, the big show on the 27th uh, that you're familiar with. We will have our families uh, in town here in a few days and get a chance to spend time with them They've been observing a you know a pretty tight quarantine to make that a, a possibility, and so I think both Doug and I are are, are really excited to uh, spend some time out at the uh, the conference center, right, uh, Colonel Cabana, the uh, conference center, the uh, formerly known as the Beach House. Get a chance to go and, and visit that facility, and, and maybe start a tradition or two out there uh, with our families as a part of the new the new uh, era that we're embarking on. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. And this will be our last question. Hi, gentlemen. Mike from Fox 35 in Orlando. Hi, Mike. So you guys have been training for this for such a long time, and then you get this wrinkle called the coronavirus. So I wonder how that changed preparation for this mission. You planned, you got all ready, and then this was like the monkey wrench. So what will you tell us about how that made things different? Well, I think just as every person standing here and every person in the united states and around the world this has been i think the <laughs> it's been a huge wrinkle to say the least to adjust everyone's lives and how we do business and how we train and how we operate it's it's been a huge huge obviously shift for everybody uh but i think for us in particular it was uh challenging because we were at that phase the last probably the last year year and a half where we were traveling to SpaceX literally every week and we had to come up with ways to make sure that not only did we keep the teams that we were working with safe but obviously ourselves safe and and our families so um, I, I can't emphasize enough of how quickly 
the folks out in Hawthorne, because that's where we did a majority of the dragon training, um, uh, responded and, and did everything that they could to keep us safe. And uh, obviously they did great work, as well as the folks at uh, Johnson and, and NASA. And we, we had to come up with a lot of unique ways to continue the training without too big of a speed bump. And, and I, 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 you know, that is, there, there've been so many things over the course of the last several years that have amazed me, but that certainly is, is high on the list because just for the, the, the absolute complete shift that people had to do and the way they just did anything in their normal lives completely changed and to continue training not only on Dragon, but getting our training on Space Station before we left was uh, was also important, and, and the teams just really came together and, and, and pulled it off. So, I, I, you know, it'll be something that we'll have to talk about uh, in a lot more detail after the flight, just how people just really stepped up. It was, it was really a neat thing to see. Okay, so I know that was the last question. Um, I'm gonna take liberty and ask one final question, if that's okay. Um, you guys have been communicating with me and I've seen that um, as you are blazing this trail, and you really are blazing a trail, each of you has shown me, from time to time, new traditions that you are establishing. Um, and it's hopeful that those tradi traditions will carry on and maybe even be added to in the future. Um, would, would each of you share uh, some of your thoughts on what are the new traditions that you have already established? I know there's going to be more. We've got another week before launch. Um, but as far as where we are right now, what are some of those new traditions that you have established? Let's see. I think uh, uh, back at, at my home in, in Houston, we took the opportunity to do something that's uh, pretty common from an astronaut perspective around the world, which is to plant a tree someplace uh, someplace and so I've, I've done it in uh, Baikonur crews do that uh, uh, in Kazakhstan on their their way to uh, launch on the Soyuz and I took the opportunity with my family to do a, a tree planting so not necessarily a, a public sort of event but a personal sort of an event and so my son will always have that uh, that lemon tree that he was a part of uh, planting that uh, hopefully it's uh, make it makes it through Houston's uh, hot summer this year and uh, becomes a tradition for some other folks as well yeah I would say um the one thing I'll talk about, we yesterday had our final proficiency sim uh, with SpaceX. They, they have a facility in Houston. And so um, we used to do a little bit of what we call tagging in the service. Uh, what it is uh, essentially is putting a sticker on the simulator for your mission uh, when you're complete with the training. And so yesterday, uh, Bob and I put the DM2 sticker on the uh, SpaceX simulator in uh, Houston uh, as kind of a continuing tradition, and I think the administrator brings up a great point there. You know, we feel somewhat responsible to continue some of these really neat traditions that both the Soyuz crews have had for many years and the shuttle crews have had, and then maybe come up with a few of our own. And as we go through this journey, we'll certainly uh, share some more of those. Well, I want to thank you, Bob and Doug, for. Um for taking the time. I know there's a lot of work to do between now and launch, uh, take, taking the time to spend with us and share some of your stories with the media. Um, you really are uh, a bright light um, for all of America right now. And this mission is a bright light for all of America. We're so grateful for your sacrifice. Um, and, uh, and I can tell you, uh, when I grow up one day, I wanna be like Bob and Doug. So. <laughs> Thank you for, so much for all you've done and all you're about to do. And uh, thank you to the media for coming to cover this great event. Appreciate you guys. Thank you, thank guys. Thank you all. Go ahead.